weekly program produced by gay men and women for and about the homosexual community in Winnipeg. We offer news, information, and entertainment from gay people here and around the world. We've planned this program to interest our family and friends as well. So even if you're not gay, why not join us for the next half hour? We'd like you to find out more about what we're really like. Hi, welcome to Coming Out. Two weeks ago we began a series of interviews with gays and lesbians who are teenagers and young adults. Our guest tonight is a typical young lesbian. She'll object to that characterization because there is no such thing as a typical young lesbian and so therefore you'll just have to be satisfied with our interview with Christy Philcox. Christy, uh, let's start with your coming out. Okay. Describe that to us. Um, I came out in a hurry, a real hurry, which I wouldn't suggest to anyone, although it uh, was right for me. I came out about uh, eight months ago um, after watching uh, an edition of L.A. Law. <laughs> they had the two characters, um, uh, Donahoe and another woman, uh, that were sort of, sort of a lesbian scene, although Donahoe pr portrayed a bisexual woman. Um, I guess why it was so influ uh, influential to me was because it offered me an alternative that I hadn't been aware of before. Here was on primetime television two women who were quite um, almost naturally, although the previous character was a little shaky, uh, almost naturally carrying on a lesbian relationship. And uh, growing up I never ever experienced uh, lesbianism as a, a, a real lifestyle, an actual lifestyle that actual people had and um, it was it was very powerful for me. Instantly, I went to the bookstore and and not the bookstore, the library, and took out everything I could find and did a lot of reading. And um, during that period of about a week, I read a little, talked to my mom, came to my decision that I was uh, a lesbian. Not really decision, came to uh, my self actualization that I was a lesbian. Told my mother, told my friends, had absolutely no negative responses at all went to um, the lesbian discussion group, went to the youth group, all in the span of a couple of weeks. <laughs> and it, it was really good. It was great. I, I felt so much better about myself, so much more comfortable and at ease, and everyone was incredibly helpful. Well, was this a surprise to you? Had you any intimations of this before? Um, it was a surprise in that I put a label to my feelings. I never really thought that um, my feelings were, were, were strange just because I, I didn't go gaga over over men's bodies like some of my friends did and uh, I just felt that my feelings were were just as, as uh, real as anyone else's and they just were a little different and the only surprise was actually putting a name to my, my, my feelings and what that name implied. Well I guess most teenagers always feel at least a little out of place so when your women, friends of yours who were women were so keen on boys and you weren't, you just accepted that? Um, yeah, pretty much. I knew that it just wasn't right for me for some reason. I um, didn't really think about it because I just didn't have any powerful feelings one way or the other. I just knew that it just wasn't right and that playing out the, uh, the, the feelings and the experiences that these women had in, in my life, straight women, uh, just would not be natural for me. So I just diverted my attentions elsewhere. What about crushes on friends and teachers? Um, no, cr no crushes on male teachers. On female teachers, I, I don't know if you would call it a crush because uh, the kinds of feelings I had weren't drop-dead powerful like, like some people have. They were more of a, a strong concern, uh, being aware of this particular woman's presence when she was around me, uh, being aware of, of her life, keeping keeping tabs on, on, on her, her, um, her experiences and just getting to know. Uh, usually, usually it was directed towards my friends. I never really had any crushes as such on uh, my teachers. But you did have on your friends? On my friends, yes. I still do. It's, it's, it's not really more of a crush. It's just a very deep, personal, close relationship that I value most highly. Uh, you would indicated that your first attempt to uh, formalize your understanding of yourself had been by going to the public library? Mm -hmm. Were you satisfied with what you found there? Um, no, no, only because I wanted to read absolutely everything ever written. But there was a good supply at the public library. There were a few books that helped me. Unfortunately, they were older books written in the 70s when uh, homosexuality, uh, not 
little, much uh, less was known about it then than, than is now. And uh, it helped me in, in that I didn't feel any negative thoughts. But I would appreciate that there would be, uh, appreciate more current materials on, on the topic. At, at the Centennial Library, which I got to later, they had much, much better selection, although they're always out. <laughs> they're always checked out. <laughs> Uh, one of our earlier guests uh, explained that his deciding to come out had been put off for years because he had been given f from his family and otherwise a really negative attitude towards mm -hmm. what homosexuals were supposed to be like. Did you have that kind of sense too? Uh, actually, no, no, it, it wasn't. I'm thinking quite the opposite, but it isn't quite the opposite either. I received no information whatsoever growing up. Um, not that my mother or, or my family tried to repress it, it just wasn't really acknowledged as, as, as existing, especially in the school system, which is something I'm bitter about now. The fact that in the family life classes it was never mentioned. Homosexuality. No, never. Um, even negatively, uh, the negative um, comments like fag or something, those are, are, are perpetrated, but they're not necessarily connected to homosexual people. It's just thought of as a negative a negative name and uh, I really received no information and that's really sad because of course growing up and you re when you receive negative uh, input it's it's horrible and it's very damaging but when you receive no input at all you know what, what do you do it's just very confusing mm -hmm. uh, it, teenage girls are often depicted as having very romantic notions about what their life is going to be like perhaps unrealistically but nevertheless uh, heavily laden with very traditional uh, 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 images of settling down and marrying and having a family and living happily ever after. Mm -hmm. is, is, is that still true, do you think, for, um, for young women your age? I'm sure it is, but I haven't experienced it. Not among the people that I've, I've grown up with. That sort of, uh, of ideal has, has pretty much been pushed aside. Women you know, if you were to, to tell that to them, they would go, oh yeah, right, sort of thing. Because uh, they're much more interested, including me, in, in career, in um, getting involved in the community in various, various degrees. Having a relationship, yes, but that's just part of it. It's, it doesn't monopolize the scene quite as much as it used to. Well then, in this case, is it much different to be a young lesbian than it would be to be a young heterosexual woman in terms of what you suppose the rest of your life was going to be like? Uh, I think so. I think so. Uh, not just in experiences, but in uh, thoughts and uh, uh, beliefs about life in general. Uh, when you, you're questioning such a big thing as, as your sexuality, you come to question a lot of other things about your life, uh, especially uh, ideals that society places upon you. Uh, the ideas about appearance, you have to look just so, you have to shave your legs, you have to have blonde hair, wear lots of makeup, that sort of thing. Uh, just, those are just little things, but then you question the idea of being able to uh, choose what kind of uh, career you want to go into, maybe a non-traditional career, uh, whether you want to have children. Just, just questioning uh, brings forth more questions and, and uh, it really affects how you, how you approach life. And then you go later on, and of course, it's much more difficult to have children because you, really, you have to arrange for uh, the male contributor instead of him just being there and uh, you have to deal with society's expectations about relationships and whether you want to be out as a couple. And it's much more complicated, but I think one of the pluses is that there is there's no set pattern like in heterosexual relationships. So you make up the rules as you go along. Well, I guess at least for a very young person at least, that would be seen to have certain advantages. That is, you didn't have the same set of rules which have sort of been lifted because you don't qualify. Mm -hmm and you get to make your own decisions. So is it this, does this seem to you to be an unusual kind of freedom that you wouldn't have had if you'd been heterosexual? Um, I, think, I think so, I think so, but only in that um, it's really the only alternative uh, for, for les lesbian women. They, not, not the only alternative, they can choose to role play, although that's probably, I, I don't find that necessarily a healthy th thing to do. But um, if I was uh, a heterosexual woman, I think I would be more inclined to follow the pattern simply because it's easier and you don't, you're not really exposed to, to alternatives. Mm -hmm. Well, on the other hand, not following the pattern would be sort of problematic because you'd have to decide about everything. Mm -hmm. is, is this arduous, aggravating, having to make all your decisions now that you're um, a, a young lesbian and not a, a housewife? Uh, not for me, not for me. I, um, making up the rules as you go along is fun because you can, you can tailor them to your own personality instead of having to feel that you have to fit into the confines of of a traditional relationship. Um, 
Yeah, I, I, I think that as the years progress and as, as people become more open and more free, I think the heterosexual community will start to learn from the, the gay and lesbian community in that, that they can, they don't have to do this, they can uh, do other things, they can have an open relationship, which some people choose, they can have a, a monogamous relationship with, where there, there is no role or there is very little role playing, um, that sort of thing. The, um, uh, the problem it, it used to be said with jumping beyond the pale of, of, so, of the social norm was that you uh, abandoned or lost all of your ethical values. You became <laughs> wanton and depraved. I mean, does it seem to you <laughs> that you or the other young lesbians you know have become wanton and depraved? Uh, quite the opposite. Um, the, uh, the, the gay community, I feel, is much more responsible than the heterosexual community that I've been exposed to. Uh, lesbian women that I know uh, are are just like pretty much any other any other heterose heterosexual woman, except they've uh, they've done some questioning, like I said, about about their lives, and they're generally more mature and more together about about what they do and the reasons why they do it. Uh, like, I, I don't, I don't want to leave this too open. Like, um, like the way they run their lives and their careers and that sort of thing. Yeah. I think most young people contemplating the possibility of coming out who know that they're gay or lesbian and now wonder what they're going to do about it are curious to know what it's like. That is, what kind of people do you meet when you go to a gay or lesbian place? Mm -hmm. Like, what kinds of women? I mean, they, they have no other way of knowing this. Even though they may know lesbians, they don't know that they're lesbians. Mm -hmm. So when they go to a, a lesbian place, what are they like? Um, well, there aren't too many lesbian places to go to. There is, there is Purdy's the Bar, but that's not a great place to meet people simply because it's a bar. Um, if the only uh, thing I can think of would be going maybe to Bold Print, which is the women's, the women's bookstore. It's not uh, strictly a, a lesbian bookstore, but it, there is a lesbian section, and if you browse through there, there's no one that's going to stare at you. It's very, very, in a very accepted part of, of the bookstore. Uh, coming to the resource center, you meet with women who are very, usually very comfortable with themselves. When you come to the Tuesday night meetings, which is the lesbian discussion group, there are women that are um, are battling with the same sort of uh, problems that 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 you are as as a young lesbian woman coming out, uh, talking to parents and things like that. And they're all just there to help each other and to help themselves to be better people and be healthy. When one of the aspects of this nervous expectation that young people have about coming out is that if they're going to find people that are like themselves but people that they can like mm -hmm. and people that aren't in some way discreditable or strange or something <laughs> like that that are normal mm -hmm. is it been your experience that the women you've met were I mean, maybe maybe you don't want to be normal, but <laughs> not weird at least yeah um, I have not met any weird women since I've come out um, Again, I think the only place that you would find that maybe is at a bar where they would be, uh, there's the alcohol that's involved and that can cause problems. Uh, women who, who only go to the bar as, as their source of, of solstice instead of coming to the resource center. So there's very little growing that's going on. There's very little uh, thinking about their lives, very little uh, reevaluating going on. So when you come to the resource center, the women here who run the center and who, who, help, who help run the center and who come to the meetings are together. They're very nice people. They're not weird. I, 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 can, I can honestly say that. Um, I don't know about normal because normal is such a relative term. I'd say pretty average people. Yeah. The, uh, the other problems that I think that a young person would anticipate having are uh, the reactions of their parents and the reactions that other people who might find out. Mm -hmm. uh, now. Your mother has responded quite well, it mm -hmm. seems to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm very lucky. Um, actually, I'm probably the exception, unfortunately, in most cases. Um, my mother uh, exhibited the same sort of, uh, sort of concerns when I came out about uh, the problems I might encounter uh, throughout the years and the people that I might meet. Uh, she herself, uh, and, and just like me, uh, was not very aware of, of lesbian people. She, I don't think she knew any lesbian women, so she didn't know what to expect. But uh, after that brief period was over, she's been very, very accepting. She's encouraged me to come down to the center. She's gone to Purdy's with me, and we've had a great time. And she, she eager to meet my lesbian friends, my gay friends. And it's, it's just been wonderful. I've been very lucky. Mm -hmm. What about going to school, for example? Mm -hmm. The other, other 
kids at school? Have you had any bad experiences? Um, at university, uh, I don't. I go to the U of W, so it's it's very, it's much more open, I think, than the U of M. From what I've been told, it's it's less conservative. Uh, people are much more comfortable being themselves. There is a gay and lesbian youth group there. Uh, the the women's center is very accepting of of lesbians within its collective and in its processes. Um, I wear my, my chosen family t-shirt, which is a cartoon uh, that uh, Noreen Stevens writes, which appears in the Uniter uh, of the, uh, the life and times of, of Kenneth Marie, who is a lesbian. And uh, I don't get any problems at all. People are very accepting. It's been very good. Well, all right. Say you graduate mm -hmm. and uh, get a job. Then, then what will you do? Would you suppose you'd go back to the closet at first? Oh, definitely not. No, 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 no. Uh, it's been a very freeing experience coming out. It's just been so uh, helpful because it's helped me to understand my feelings and myself more. I hear all kinds of horror stories about what it's like to be in the closet, and I by no means want to do that. If uh, if people can't accept me for what they are, for who I am, then it's their problem. It's the, definitely their problem. Well, all right, but um, are you sort of, do you think you're going to pick a, a job, I mean, have you this in your mind that you're going to pick a, a kind of a job where you're less likely to meet people who are homophobic, or are you just um, going to... I'm going to follow my, myself. I, I'm not going to make a conscious effort to do that. Um, I think that's totally uh, unhelpful for me and, and unhel un, unhelpful for society. Uh, some people find it, it, it uh, good to go into careers where they are more likely to receive hostility, just to, to break the stereotypes and to make it easier for, for other people. I, I just don't plan on thinking about it. I know what I'm interested in and I'm not going to, to alter that to suit anyone. I'm just going to be true to myself. It used to be the case when people came out that while they were prepared to do all the things that allowed them to make friends and, and meet people for relationships and so on, that they drew a very strong line between that and doing anything that was public. Uh, anything that might be political or anything in which they individually came out to other people in public. Uh, and they were very frightened, I think, of those who did things more publicly than they because they felt threatened by this. Uh, but that's not your case, obviously. You've, you've been quite open from the beginning. Do you think that, that, that sh there should be this difference in your experience? Is this just because your upbringing was so benign or is, have times changed so that being open is not such a problem? Uh, I think both. I think both. I've uh, grown up in a very positive and neutral environment so that it was, e it was easy for me because I didn't have all of the excess baggage that some people do. Um, and I do think that it is easier than it, than it was. It's, it's much more acceptable to be an open gay or lesbian and much more acceptable to uh, ha be in a, in a couple between uh, two lesbians or two gay men. There seems to be these days a lot more political activity by young gays and lesbians. Mm -hmm. And is, this, is, is it just them in particular or are all like all university students, for example, more political than they were 10 years ago. Um, Maybe you don't remember, but we had a period in which yeah, they were not political. Yeah. Um, I think they have gotten successively more, successfully, successively more political, uh, perhaps more stably political instead of like, I guess, in the 60s where everyone suddenly felt the need to be, to be political. Now it's just an accepted part of life. And I think uh, lesbians and gay men have just followed that. But it, the university students in general are more... Oh, I think so, yes. Yeah. Well, also in my day, I must say, coming out, one had in one's mind a pretty strongly held objective of meeting someone and settling down and living happily ever after. Uh, is that still a part of the, of the expectations of young gays and lesbians coming out? Are they still um, focused on having a relationship? I think, I think uh, heterosexual society expects that if, if, in fact, they find gay couples gay and homosexuality accepted, acceptable in the first place, I think that would be the natural assumption simply because that is the closest to, to heterosexual relationships. I hope that that's going to change because that simply is not right for everyone. Some people uh, do well in a monogamous relationship, some people do well in an open relationship. Um, for some people they want to live with this, this person for the rest of their lives and for some people they just want to live as long as they love that person. I, I just hope that there are going to be more, more or less restrictions and, and more experimentation. Mm -hmm. Well, all right, what about the practical possibility of achieving whichever of those objectives you particularly happen to have? Is it reasonable for a young woman to expect that she can meet uh, women that she would really respect and love, or a woman that would, you know, in each of those possible categories? Uh, I, think it's, I think it's possible. I think it's just a matter of finding the right person and going to the right place where you would find 
women who are like that and being being open about about your feelings and expectations and not not um, making sure that making sure that the other person knows that and instead of surprising them later on about about your feelings I, I uh, appreciate that with this next question we may be jumping the gun a bit on your experience but do you have any sense whether it is possible to carry out a lesbian relationship I mean it's often argued that society makes life very difficult for women in general and particularly for for homosexual women but is it nevertheless the case that women can get into relationships and, and carry them out without too much interference from society? Um, I think women, uh, lesbians more so than gay men, simply because uh, female sexuality is, is not really valued right now. So it's, it's not that big a deal for more, for more people uh, than for gay male relationships. Um, I think it is possible, I know it's possible. Um, I just hope that um, they're approached in the right way. There's so many women who jump the gun in, in getting into relationships before they've really come to terms with themselves both heterosexual women and homosexual women. And it's, it's all a matter of, of the personality, I think. You, you're suggesting that they be, be rational in their uh, infatuations? Well, I think a little rationality helps, definitely. I don't think that it should be uh, love at first sight, fall in love, and, and, and forget about everything else. Definitely not. It's doomed to failure that way, I think. <laughs> well, this sounds like uh, dating, which is what straight teenagers start doing when they're, I don't know, what, 13 or 14 years <laughs> old. Uh, I guess uh, lesbians would put that off really until they came out and then start over again. Is that is that a problem? Um, a problem. It's it's more difficult to f more difficult to find uh, lesbians to date simply because there are much fewer of, fewer than, of them than there are like heterosexual men. There are a dime a dozen pretty much. But um, you have to uh, you have to find uh, someone who's right for you, and it, it can be difficult because. Uh, y you want to make sure you find someone who's healthy and who, who's emotionally stable and that's not terribly easy when you're, when you're going through the coming out process but uh, you really need to per persevere and um, not settle for someone who just isn't right for you. Okay, well just, just for example, what sort of woman are you looking for? Oh, okay. <laughs> I am looking for someone who's young at heart. I'm not concerned about age, although uh, differences of 10 and 20 years are going to bound to be a problem. Um, someone who is kind and sincere, uh, healthy is definitely my, my priority. Uh, some uh, woman who is uh, kind and compassionate and uh, just a little off the wall. I'm, I'm a goofy kind of person. <laughs> well now, this is of course a lot easier said than done mm. and uh, I, I'm sure many people find heterosexuals find this too, but especially gays and lesbians, getting up the nerve to do the sort of the work, as it were, of meeting people, introducing yourself to people, do you have trouble with that? Are you, um, are young people somehow immune from this? No, <laughs> I'm coming to terms with that. Uh, it, it is difficult, especially since you don't know who you're approaching. Um, I think it gets easier when you're in a safe situation like the resource center as opposed to the bar, uh, where you have a good idea of what that person is like through friends and just just going for it. I mean, the worst they can do is say no. And and if if you're if you're there just just to have fun and just to take it easy and and not take things too seriously, then if the person shows no interest, then it's no big deal. It's not it's not that big a deal. I'm trying to trying to do that more. <laughs> It sounds like you're an advocate of the gradual approach of getting to know someone quite well. Oh, definitely, definitely. That's the only way you can you can really get to know one somebody. Instead of jumping the gun, you just you miss all the little things that are so important. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, I think, always the case, and especially is now among gay men, that they're anxious about uh, oh, uh, sexually transmitted diseases or all these other kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Is it different for lesbians? Um, it is different. Uh, but it's not that different. Uh, it's it's a common belief that lesbians cannot get AIDS, and that's that's a myth. Lesbians can get AIDS, just as, as women can get AIDS, just through different means. Um, I think it's less of a concern because of that, and that's that's a shame. Uh, women are just as susceptible to to disease under the certain circumstances, although they are perhaps less likely to to uh, to receive them. Um, I think that it is important to keep that in mind and not to forget about it, but just using the same precautions as anyone else would is, is all you really need to keep in mind. Well now, uh, with any luck, there'll be all sorts of uh, young women watching this program <laughs> who are thinking, well, you know, I, uh, I might, there might be something here that may mean something to me. Mm -hmm. 
Um, what do you suggest they do? Um, well, what I suggest they do is perhaps keep it to themselves before they tell their parents because you never quite know what's going to happen. And just coming out and telling someone like your parents who may or may not be supportive of you, if that person is in fact hostile, that can put you in the closet for a long time. So I think the best thing to do is to get some literature, some modern literature that is not gang negative and, and made up of all the ignorant views of, of a few years ago, but to do some reading, to go down to the resource center, to talk to people on the gay info line, and uh, to get it together reasonably so that when you do approach parents and friends, you know the facts and you're comfortable with yourself so that they can't sense any, any doubt or, or fear that they can plug into if they're not positive towards you. Terrific. Thank you very much. Thank you. If you'd like more information about being lesbian, especially young lesbian, why not drop by the library of the Winnipeg Gay and Lesbian Resource Centre. It's located in Suite 1, 222 Osborne Street South at the corner of Macmillan. It's open weekday evenings from 7.30pm to 10pm. The Resource Centre Library contains a number of books and periodicals about being lesbian including uh, lots of romantic novels if you want some, uh, read some of the experiences of others as well as first-person accounts of growing up lesbian. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Good night.